ahead and create it. Let's go to our render layers um, on the bottom right of our screen. Click on this little icon, on the third one. Click on it. Again, everything's going to disappear. Don't worry. Double click on this and call it wireframe. Maybe with a capital, whatever you like. Again, there's nothing there, so we need to select our objects. Let's go back to the master layer, select everything. Right click on wireframe, add selected objects. Now when we go to wireframe, you're going to see that our objects are there, exactly like occlusion. So wireframe is a little bit different than occlusion in the sense that there is no preset. We actually have to create the shader and basically tell it to do several steps for it to for wireframe to show up. The first thing we need to do is actually involves our camera. When we render, what we want is the background to be white. Right now it is black, so we actually need to change it. So to do that, we're going to select our camera and do a control A, which is open up the attributes. We need to go to the shape and you're going to scroll down until you see environment. In environment, you can see background color. Uh, you don't want to just change it to white because that will actually change the background on all render layers. Now we're only doing two, but if you had more than one, you actually just want, it would actually affect all of the layers. So what you want to do is actually just tell the camera, I want this render layer, the wireframe render layer, to just have a white background. So to do that, we can do what's called a render layer override. To do that is actually pretty surprisingly simple. You just right click on the actual word background color, right click, and then there is right there at the bottom, it says create layer override. You will see that it's actually now uh, orange. That means that you did it right. So swing, once you've created your render layer override, you're gonna swing this to the right. And when you now when you render, it's going to turn white. Our background is white. Now the fun thing about render layers is that it only affects that specific render layer. If I go to, for example, my master layer, you'll notice that it's just black. So that's exactly what I want. I just want the background to be white for just wireframe. All right, now that we have the background set up, let's go ahead and start creating a shader. This shader is what's going to tell Maya to render a white um, the shader is going to be white and then it's going to give us a black outline. So let's go ahead and do that with the hypershade. Go ahead and create a hypershade or open up the hy hypershade. Uh, you can do that through Windows, rendering editors, hypershade. And what we want to use is just a regular Lambert. Go ahead and select the Lambert. I personally like to label everything, so let's go ahead and call this a wireframe Lambert. and open up the attributes. I'm going to swing this over to the right. I want this uh, shader to be white, so go ahead and drag the color slider to the, to the right for white. I also want it to be have no uh, shadow information or line information, so grab your incandescence and drag it all the way to the right. Basically, it almost makes like a surface shader. So now you can see that it is there is no shadow information, and that's exactly what we want. If uh, also, let's go ahead and take our diffuse and just crank it up to one as well. Now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and click on this little guy right here. This is going to take us to the SG node. The SG node is just a connection on, our, on every Lambert. So again, if you click here, you're going to get to the SG node. And we need to use the mental ray. This is a mental ray option. So scroll down. Open up Mental Ray. What we're looking for is contours. Check contours, and it's going to make this active. Now, the color at default is white. This is actually what's going to make the black wireframe. This is actually the outline of the polygons. So, white on white isn't really going to work, so let's swing that to the left. That's going to make this black. Leave the alpha alone. If you wanted to make it semi-transparent, this is the way you do it, but we're going to actually be doing everything in After Effects, so don't change the alpha. And the width. The width is actually how thick you want the contours. If you wanted it to be extremely thick, then leave it at 1.25. I personally think it's way too thick, so let's go ahead and change it to 0.5. And we can play with this later to see if we can make, make the contours a little bit less. 
All right, now that we have this, let's go ahead and select all of our geometry and assign our wireframe Lambert to it. So right click on your shader and say assign material to selection. So when we render, you're going to see that everything's completely white and we don't really see anything. But if you go to your alpha channel, you're going to see, okay, our objects are in fact there. It's just that we don't see the contours. Well, we actually have to tell Mental Ray or our renderer to, ple to basically, we have to tell it, um, I've actually activated the contours. Go ahead and render them out. So let's go to our render settings, which is this little clapper over here and the two little circles. Go ahead and click on that. That's the render settings. And we want to go to features. So click on features and give it a second to load. Once we're in features, you're going to scroll all the way down and go to contours. Go ahead and open that up. And now we have enable contour rendering. Now we could just go ahead and turn it on, but again, we only want this to be affected on each render layer. So let's go ahead and tell it just affect wireframe. So right click on enable uh, contour rendering and go to create layer override and then check it on. Now that we render, we're going to get our outline. Awesome. Okay, so let's change a couple of things here just to make it a little bit clearer. Um, our oversamples, um, I've already changed it, so go ahead and change the oversamples to three. Your Gaussian filter needs to be, I'm sorry, your, uh, your filter types needs to be Gaussian. Your draw by properties, actually, you need to activate this first before you can see anything. At default, you're going to render and it's not going to show up anything. But if you click on around all polyfaces, then you're going to see something. So I apologize, I did this a little bit earlier and you can see that it worked and you're going to be trying to figure out, scrambling, figuring out why isn't it working in mine. The reason why is that I did it earlier, so please go ahead and open up your draw by property differences and check on around all polyfaces. Now, and when you render, you should get wireframe. Okay, so now that we have our wireframe, we have a white background, we have our wireframe shader, everything's looking good, the quality's nice. If you wanted to go back and make the line thicker or thinner, you can always go back to your wireframe Lambert, click on this little guy right here, and change your width to, let's say if I wanted to make it a little bit thinner, to 0.25. Keep this image and render. You can see that uh, the quality's not so good, but I do get the thickness. Uh, the default was about 1.25. I'm going to put it at 1, and now when I render, you can see that I can get like this really strong outline. So I feel 0.5 is a good number, and that's how you create wireframe occlusion. And notice that the master layer stays the way it is. All right, so now that we have all the render layers, the next part is actually how to create what's called a batch render so that we can render everything out and get the animation going and then open it up in After Effects.